when I was uh, a senior in high school, I took uh, a course in debating, public speaking it was called, and Lyndon Johnson was the teacher. He had just, co just come, to, he was five years older than I was. I was 16 and he was 21. And he had been teaching in a little country school someplace. Catula, I think. Catula, yes. And uh, came to Houston. Came to Houston, and uh, that's where I met him and got acquainted with him. And I got on his debating team, and one thing led to another, and so forth. That's how you became friends with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all won the won some championships. We won every contest we were ever in, all the way until the state finals. And then we got whipped. Where was that? In Austin. In Austin? And Lyndon got on the floor and wept. So forth. That's how you became friends with him? Yeah. How many years were, was he your teacher? Just one year or was it? One year. Then, then he went to Washington, didn't no. he? No. Uh, he kept on teaching uh, for another two years. And in the meantime, he took a Dale Carnegie course. He became the head of a Dale Carnegie course that he taught at night to businessmen. And he got a big audience. That may be where he Dale went. Carnegie was his hero. Maybe Carnegie's one of the people that made him such a good poli politician. Undoubtedly. The, Undoubtedly. Whole, the whole concept, the whole Carnegie concept. Well, then, what did you do after that high school? After the I two went to Rice for two years. Oh, for two years? Yeah, while he was teaching, still teaching in, in his Dale Carnegie course and his regular courses at high school, Sam Houston High School. Um, I went to Rice, and when, at the end of the two years, during the summer, uh, Lyndon dropped by my father's store and uh, talked to my dad and said, look, I'm going to Washington, and I want to take L.E. with me. That was what they called me then, L.E. Mm -hmm. For short, he had been appointed uh, through some political help. His daddy was in the legislature and had lots of political friends. Yeah. And some of those political friends helped Lyndon get this job as secretary to the congressman from Corpus Christi, Dick Clayburn. He was like his administrative assistant. No, he was secretary. Okay. That's what they called him. Uh, and um, he, he, uh, Lyndon knew that I could write shorthand and type. And, and he persuaded me and the other debater, Gene Latimer, we had been the debate heroes in Lyndon's life, persuaded both of us to come with him to Washington, D.C. So at the end of the, around near the end of the summer, after I'd finished two years at Rice, I went to Washington, and I laid out of school for a year, working as a, a well, as a stenographer, really. Lyndon did all the thinking. He was the congressman. And we'd get up before sunup and get to bed at midnight, after midnight, many, many nights. Where'd y'all live? At the Dodge Hotel, just two or three blocks from from the Capitol, uh, from the House office building. And uh, Lyndon was a steam engine in pants, to quote Macaulay. <laughs> um, energy that's unbounded. Energy was power. Unmitigated, undiluted, unadulterated power. How long did y'all work together there in Clayburg's office? Well, I stayed a year out of school, and then uh, the next September after that year, uh, I decided to go to Georgetown Law School at night. What, what, let, what let year would that decide. have been? Hmm? What year would that have been? Oh, let's see, 1933, so about 35, September of 35, and Lyndon decided to go to law school. And he and I... Did he enroll in... in he and I lit, enrolled in Georgetown Law School uh, to, to become lawyers. And in two months, he dropped out. He didn't like it. It was not for him. He didn't like it. He did not like it. Did you go a whole nine and months? I went a whole nine months and finished the first year of law school. All right. At the end of that year, uh, before the end of that school year, or right around the end of that school year, Lyndon uh, maneuvered his politics so that he got appointed National Youth Administrator uh -huh. for Texas. And uh, so... He got, he moved down there to take over, and he lived in Dr. Montgomery's mansion, who's gone someplace, I don't know where, he's a retired professor. And uh, I went to Austin, followed him, and lived with him, he and Berg, and went to, enrolled in the University of Texas Law School, and then worked part-time in the National Youth Administration. Every evening, every afternoon, 
I'd be a typist. And you live with them there in Austin? Two years, yeah. In their garage apartment? No, 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 hell no. I had my own. It's a big. It was a big mansion. I had a big living room. I mean, a big bedroom. He had a big mansion. Well, for that for that area, yeah. Doctor Doctor Montgomery's home over a overlooking a. Um, it's sort of a semi hilly area. Yes. Overlooking a beautiful area, with lots of flowers and trees, and and uh, I don't know how Lyndon lucked into it. Some lobbyist, I think, helped him. Yeah, to get that. And. and uh, who appointed him the National Youth Administrator? He was, he was well, well, the president had to. He'd made friends with the president uh, while working for Clayburg. Uh, yes, and uh, Lyndon was buddies with all the big lobbyists, the multi, multi, multi million dollar lobbyists. And they helped him. I can't give you their names, but I met them all. And Lyndon would talk about them at great length, how brilliant they were and how they could get anything done, and they could. There was some guy from Austin that, uh, yeah. what was his name? Oh, he that guy was. Uh, and he's the one who's. He was the one that helped Allred be governor. He's the one and that he helped Lyndon be congressman. He's the one that uh, had the girlfriend, Alice Glass. Well, I, all that stuff is vague in my memory, and it's been retold in Cairo beautifully in detail. Yeah. Cairo's book's got it all. He's very accurate. Didn't Cairo? End of the line. Didn't, huh? didn't Cairo come down and visit with you? Yes, for a weekend. And. And I, I gave him a whole bunch of stuff, you know, that I'd saved, copies of things. Uh, but I graduated from law school, and uh, then Lyndon was elected to Congress. From Central Texas? Hmm? From Central Texas? Well, in Austin there. Yes. And uh, he went to Congress, and I got my law degree, and I went to Houston and tried to get a job. Houston. And fell, uh, yeah, I went to Houston where I live, and I went around several law firms, and the best I could get was $75 a month. Your dad was still had the drugstore, <coughs> didn't he? Yeah, the best I could get was $75 a month. So I was really desperate for something to do, and I got on the phone and I talked to Lyndon Johnson, who was now a congressman, and he says, well, come on up and we'll get you a job. Now, we can't guarantee it immediately, but... Uh, but we'll, we'll get it as soon as possible with the help of Roy Miller. That was the most famous of all the lobbyists. The guy from Corpus. Yeah, and we'll get you. We'll get you a job. So I go up there, live in the Dodge Hotel with Lyndon. In in Lady Bird. Oh no 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 no! I'm mistaken about that. I lived with Lyndon earlier before he married Lady Bird. But I, I went to I went to um, Washington, and I went and lived in the Dodge again. How'd you get there? By train. Train. And uh, uh, I worked a solid year before they found a job for me in the Justice Department. Doing what? I ran an elevator, and then the rest of the time I went in his office and helped write letters, just like I'd done back when I was secretary. And I was just about ready to give up. I was making about $150 a month. And, uh, and you were a lawyer? Yeah. And Roy Miller came in one day, just beaming, said, I got, I got it for you. Talking to Linda, not talking to me. He got me the job. Where? As a briefing clerk in the Department of Justice in the Lands Division. And um, I got the magnificent salary of $150 a month. And what was your job? Writing briefs. Is that where you got your interest in the land law? No, no. That was the eminent domain, right? Oh, okay. Uh, that's where I got my interest in brief writing, though, because I came in contact with the brilliant, I was about the dumbest lawyer in the whole Justice Department. Most of the guys were, had Phi Beta Kappas from Harvard and other places, and, and about three-fourths of them were Jewish boys who worked like madmen. Hmm. And uh, So how long did you work there? In the I worked there uh, about one year, and then I went with uh, Alvin Wirtz, came up to be Secretary of uh, Interior. Uh, not, not secretary, but undersecretary of interior from Austin, and uh, I became his assistant for a few months. And while I was working for him by accident, uh, one of the men I had known in the Justice Department who liked me, one of the briefers who mm. liked me, yeah. had been a clerk for Justice Butler on the United States Supreme Court. And one day he came in and said, "Look, since you write shorthand and type." 
and you've had this experience with the Justice Department, which makes it look like you're smart. He's real like that. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'll recommend you to Justice Department, and I think he'll hire you. Well. And he did, and I was hired. How long did you came, I stayed there about 13 months. For Butler? Yeah. You were his briefing clerk? Yeah. And then I went back to the Department of Justice and stayed a little while, and they transferred me to Texas. The, the Lands Division the, uh, that I was in sent me to Texas to help uh, condemn bases for the, uh, the naval base.